marriage is really synonymous with union. In fact, if you listen to the marriage vows, where two become as one, um, where a, a man shall leave his mother and a woman leave her home, uh, you know, it's it's the symbol of joining together and, and coming together in, the, in union. That's really what the intent is behind marriage. Now, the more you start to understand the metaphysics of this world, you start to realize that that when you have two separate human beings that perceive themselves as private individuals with private minds and private thoughts, uh, that the attempt at joining uh, is going to, you know, there's going to be all hell breaking loose uh, before this union is consummated. It would be so easy just to have sex to consummate the union, <laughs> but, but that's not the way it works. Uh, because there's going to be what people enter into a, a committed relationship, whether it's just a significant other or whether it's actually a legal marriage or whatever, what you're going to find is there's an enormous amount of mirroring that's going to go on and flushing up an enormous darkness, unconscious fear and guilt and hatred and worthiness issues and uh, all these past issues that have been pushed down under awareness get flushed up uh, in significant other kind of relationships. So, in one sense you might say there's, it's, a, it's a nice impetus behind it, where two become as one. But when you get into what Jesus is teaching us in the Course, is that two never become one. But you have to let go of the mask of your individuality to recognize that you already are one. That God created you, whom God has joined together and let no man put asunder. You, know, you can't really break apart from each other or from God. And, and that's really the goal of, of marriage. And if it's given over to the Holy Spirit, or if it's given over to your higher power, the Holy Spirit will use that commitment to flush up everything that's not love, so that you can see that you are truly one mind. Sometimes you hear about, like I, my grandmother I mentioned earlier, she and Lillian and Harry were married for 57 years. And uh, they went through lots of stuff in those 57 years, but a lot of times, if, if you really do move, move towards that union experience, it's like two people finishing each other's sentences. Um, it gets really telepathic. If, if it's truly used by the Holy Spirit, you start to lay down the walls, lay down the projections and the grievances, and you reach better and better communication. Loving, respectful, open-minded, um, heartfelt, intimate communication, and, and it actually starts to take you actually into telepathy. Uh, and that's what soulmates are all about, you know, where you, you, your souls kind of beat, beat as one, and you're so tuned in that you, you hardly need words. You just can look at each other and know what you're thinking. Now to the ego, uh, the ego has its own version of marriage. Bodies together, minds apart. Uh, and we've heard about those marriages that, that may seem to last, uh, but the, the quality of the marriage is, is not good at all. It's like, it's dark. It's like ships passing in the night. It's, it's a sense of privacy. It's a sense of like, you know, just digging in and saying, well, we'll stay together for the sake of the kids or the sake of the whatever, the sake of the finances or whatever. And that's when the ego's got a hold of the so-called marriage and it's using it to reinforce separation. And so, divorce is, oh, there's a connotation around divorce, it's a terrible thing. Divorce isn't always a bad thing. <laughs> if, uh, if, if the ego's got the hold of your marriage, uh, the Holy Spirit may come swooping into your mind and go, it's time to get a divorce. <laughs> um, because, you know, you, you want to grow, and you want to open up. And, and it's one thing to, to open towards this high calling, but it's another thing to just stick it out just for the sake of uh, hanging in there to keep the bodies together. So if the minds aren't really communicating, and you don't really share a purpose, uh, then it's, it'd be actually good to start to question, what's the purpose of, of hanging on here? Uh, where's the aliveness? Where's the joy? Where's the happiness and the freedom? Now when you get to A Course in Miracles, he says, the only true union is at the level of the Christ mind. So even the best of marriages in this world you know, aspire to that, but the Christ mind, the level of the Christ mind, that is a realm of pure oneness, because the Christ mind is pure oneness. And that really gets into mysticism. So you might say that 
that some of these mystics and saints, I mean, you know, just play St. Francis, and you think of Jesus and the Apostles, and St. John of the Cross, and all these mystics and saints, they've been going for union with God, too. Uh, when I've met, I've gone to convents, I've gone to monasteries, I've talked to priests, nuns, rabbis, monks. When we really go deep into the discussion, what you find is that they're going for union with God, too. They're going for a marriage of their own kind. In fact, nuns go through quite a series of steps to become the Bride of Christ, uh, literally. And, and I had a friend that traveled with me in the early years. She went into the convent at 14, and then stayed in there for like eight years, until she was supposed to take her final vows, and they get dressed up in, in white. white, and they're supposed to marry Jesus. Everything. And she left Jesus at the altar, though. She couldn't, uh, <laughs> she couldn't go through with it. She, she got that all the way to that point to take her final vows, and then she went, I'm out of here. And so, uh, and I had worked with her, you know, after she left there. It's your fault. She, I, she, had, she had done that. She talked to the Mother Superior and said, I can't do this, I'm out of here. She just bolted from the, from the convent. Then she got married within like a couple years to a man, and then they were married for a while. Then she, he seemed to go insane and crazy and didn't know who she was, and so she divorced him. And then she tried the Peace Corps and all these things, and, she, and I had worked with her many years ago. And then when she found me again, I was so lit up with joy, she just was like, what have you been doing? I mean, what are you into? I mean, my gosh, you are just so lit. And I said, well, it's been a course of miracles and this and that. So she ended up uh, taking off and traveling with me. But that was another good example about how even when you're trying to be the bride of Christ, uh, you've got to face those unconscious, yeah, yeah. dark things uh, that are there. Whether you do it through a partnership, or you do it with the mother superior, <laughs> or, or you do it with uh, whatever, uh, you're going to have to go through those dark uh, things. And so I kind of keep it in a larger context of um, it's really about following your inner prompts. And it's really about being true to that guidance, because the Holy Spirit is inside you. And there's nothing special about being married or single. And there's nothing special or better about going into a convent or going through a, a marriage relationship. 